Okay, now are we on? Here we go. All right, uh, welcome uh, folks in, um, in Cohasset. Um, I'm Kevin McCarthy, I'm chair of the Cohasset Board of Selectmen and this um, meeting is being called as an emergency meeting pursuant to provisions of Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20B. Uh, I'd like to call a roll call, please. Start with Diane. Diane Kennedy here. Paul Shibbert here. Kevin McCarthy here. Carrie Thompson here. Jack Creighton here. Okay, I'd like to we'll do a pledge of allegiance to those who, uh, see do we have a flag anywhere? Put yours up if you could, Chief, yep. Put the Chief's flag right there. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, okay, we're here, uh, folks, uh, and we're gonna move the meeting right along because, uh, and as you can see, we've spaced, as we should be in all meetings that are done in town, we encourage everybody to do that, the kind of spacing that we're doing now, everybody's six feet apart. And we're gonna move this meeting along because, uh, uh, because uh, we're here under the conditions of the uh, uh, Corona, uh, virus emergency, and um, we're gonna cover the business that we need to do and, and then be done with it uh, for today. And the main purpose is, is to uh, 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 proclaim a, a declaration of emergency. Um, so in, does anybody wanna comment on the implications of what the declaration of emergency does, essentially? Uh, Glenn? Uh, there are no implications, there are a lot of background. Uh, it's based on the Chapter 639 Act of 1950, uh, which basically was a cold war thing, giving the government uh, the authority to respond to any sort of a uh, disaster or attack. That's been modernized somewhat. And in 1965, it was amended to create what's now called Massachusetts Emergency Management. The declaration is an administrative tool that allows municipal government access to state and federal resources to better serve the community as disasters, emergencies, and crisis events develop. It allows us to more quickly utilize and coordinate municipal services, equipment, supplies, and facilities. The declaration uh, that I'm asking uh, to be declared today uh, allows us to request uh, help and supplies and materials through Minima Mass Emergency Management Agency to in turn uh, request from FEMA. Uh, without the declaration, we're not eligible to receive those uh, that help and those, those goods or whatever it is coming down from FEMA. It also allows us to access what's called the statewide, uh, the statewide mutual aid agreement, which we signed a number of years ago, like all cities and towns in Massachusetts. <coughs> Coasset is a small population, and most times when there's regional disasters or situations like we're having now, uh, they're prioritized by population. So we're already uh, way down the list when we're looking for things. And if we don't have a declaration in Nina's hands, we can't even get on the list when we request help or any sort of aid. Uh, on the local level, it just gives the incident command uh, group, uh, which is being led by Chief Sylvia now, uh, who's our incident commander, uh, it gives him the authority to order and direct uh, any agency or anything that needs to be done without delay and without um, being held up by regulations. So it's vitally important, and uh, I encourage you to uh, make a declaration this morning. Okay. Any uh, further comments anybody has to make before we deliberate? Any chiefs or anything? Chris? Uh, it, it, we're, we're at a point now where it's something that the, we need to do. That's the reason we've accelerated up. Uh, things have changed even since last night. So we're at a point now where we just need to get this in place, and uh, we need to move forward, continue to move forward to protect uh, the public health and safety. Okay, okay, any other input? If not, we'll deliberate in the board. Any board members have any comments? I'm in favor of it. Okay, any other comments? It seems necessary and prudent at this point, so. Okay, any other comments? Clearly it needs to be done. Okay, okay, uh, that being um, the case then, uh, why don't we, and you all have it in front of you, so you know what the contents are, so why don't we have a, <coughs> a um, 
what I'll do is I'll read it and then we'll take a motion, okay? So everybody knows what's being done. This is the uh, declaration. It's Town of Cohasset Board of Selectmen Declaration of Emergency. Whereas the worldwide outbreak of COVID-19 and the effects of its extreme risk of person-to-person -person transmission throughout the United States and the Commonwealth significantly affect the life and health of our people as well as the economy and is a disaster that impacts the health, security, and safety of the public. And whereas the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has issued a declaration of emergency on March 10, 2020, and determined that the immediate public auction action is needed to prevent, minimize, or mitigate damage to public health, safety, or general welfare of the people of Commonwealth and or, and or property which may otherwise result from the above described emergency and whereas the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has recommended that a state of emergency be declared in local communities and whereas the people of the community of Cohasset should be able to depend upon guidance from their chief municipal of officials. Now, wherefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Cohasset, Massachusetts, hereby declare that immediately and effective as of the 16th of March, 2020, a state of emergency is declared to exist in Cohasset. This declaration of emergency shall remain in effect until notice is given pursuant to our judgment that the state of emergency no longer exists, dated March 16th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Make we a adopt? motion. We approve the declaration of emergency. It's just read. Issuing it. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote on this emergency declaration. Start with Diane. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul Schubert, aye. Kevin McCarthy, aye. Terry Thompson, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. Okay, and the roll call shows a unanimous vote. Tracy, uh, with that done, um, this has been passed. We need one signed copy. I'd rather have two if we could. Two signed copy. Which, can I have you out here with them, please? Do you have another one? Do you have, do you have your copy? Okay, why don't we just keep them right here, right here, folks, if you would. Why don't we get it done, because it's a, this is the important function. If everybody could, uh, one by one, come up and just sign this here. Uh, so. Why don't you start with you first, Gary? Jack. Okay, uh, Chris, here, I'll give this to you. I'm going to give the uh, two signed declarations to our town manager for proper administration, okay? Okay, with that done, let, we want to discuss uh, just a few th actions that we may want to take immediately. And the first one will be uh, we'll review the vote. Um, all the public events that are, are, are set to occur, the proposal here is that all, we cancel all <coughs> um, event permits that have been issued um, through April 30th, 2020. Um, if, I, if, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman. And do we have a comment? Yes. So I did, I did speak with Council Dorentis this morning, uh, and, and since this agenda was even posted, the governor's come out with new directives. So basically, no events of any kind with any group of, of more than 25 people are, are allowed anywhere in the state 
Uh, restaurants have been closed uh, and bars to take out only. So at this point, uh, effectively, I think the action is just, we're just gonna implement the governor's directives. Um, because there's nothing that we, that you folks are praying, this is really just the permits that you issue for you know, big group activities. None of them are that small. <laughs> uh, you know, basically we're talking about the road race, which has been, been canceled effectively anyway. That was April 5th. Uh, we have Earth Day on April 25th, which we might be able to revisit, by the way, but again, we'll get to that as we come to it. If we can do that in a way that keeps people from really interacting too much, it may not be a bad public activity for people to get out and help clean up the community, and that's a month away, so we'll... What, what event is that? It's Earth Day. Earth Day, okay. Uh, yeah. But no, so, so um, and then um, the next events, and there's a, I believe there's, there's an MS walk that was scheduled. Um, uh, there was a bike ride that day. That's going to be postponed as well. That has to be, um, that's more than 25 people on the, on the bikes. The next events don't come until early May, and that's a Little League opening parade and a couple of, and a, an MS walk. I believe Little League has already delayed its opening from what I've been reading. Um, so at this point, I don't think you necessarily have to take action on those, though I do think we'll revisit them in the next couple of weeks and just see where we stand um, with an understanding that anything in May may end up getting kicked back too. Um, okay, so in sum, the governor has given specific directions relative to what needs to be canceled. Those essentially have the effect of law. We don't need to do anything further and they'll be done. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I think at this point, that's, I think that's fair. Okay, uh, so that's, that's decided that we'll do it. Would you, in your daily uh, update today to the community, outline that so that that can be posted publicly? Hey, okay. On, on the, the, the next point, the, the, the public meetings, effectively, all public meetings are, uh, the only thing that's, the only meetings that, that, ca that need to take place are essential meetings, and exactly what that means, I guess we'll have to see. There might be some items in the pipeline that require some activity, some permit filed or something. We're gonna work today to figure out what's in, right? We, as of today, we don't have to accept any new filings for anything. So effectively, all the approval processes for non, you know, building, per, you know, building permits and planning board activities, those are all frozen because we're not taking anything new. We have to assess today what's in the process and what can be delayed. The first act we'll do is, is, is attempt to have everyone just sign off, any applicant, and just recognize that nothing's gonna happen in the short term, so we just mutually all agree it's gonna be deferred. If for some reason we can't get that to happen, uh, we'll try to set up an online meeting with the appropriate board, and again, I, I think we're only talking about um, maybe the planning board or the zoning board where something like that, or the conservation commission where something like that may be pending because we don't wanna have a constructive approval. Of, um, the, um, we'll know better in the next couple days what we have to do with that. Uh, there's action at the state level. There's a proposal to freeze everything in place right now. It hasn't gone into effect yet. We expect it will by the end of the week, but we're just acting in a, you know, with all due caution to make sure that nothing's gonna slip through the cracks anywhere. Um, okay, so do we need to take action on that or is that done by yeah, law? Yeah, I, I think if, I think yeah, if effectively, I, the, the, all, the board can declare that no, me, no non-essential meetings should take place for, you know, the next Okay, why don't we days. have a motion just to be safe that, the one thing I want, yeah, and I want to be clear too is um, if someone make the motion that no non-essential meeting be occur until the emergency declaration is over, and that includes all committee and board meetings, town committee and board meetings, to make sure the motion says that so that they, they know that. So could we have that motion? Um, Mr. Chair. Uh, excuse me, yes. Uh, very quick point, just so you're aware, Starting the end of last week, we were concerned about how we were gonna keep all boards uh, informed of exactly what was going on on a day-to-day <coughs> -day basis. And last Friday, we entered into an agreement with Zoom as one of the platforms that we were gonna use. So when you make that motion, I, I would suggest that the idea may be that the motion is that no meetings will happen face-to-face. -face. And as we develop our programming, we may be able to start to roll out meetings that people can attend, but we don't know what that means. There's new guidance from the governor as of last night. So I would just ask that whatever motion you make, you allow us that flexibility that as we move forward and technology allows that we could have meetings. All right. I was gonna cover that uh, separately. So what we could do is just have a motion where uh, there'll be no face-to-face. -face. And then after that motion's passed, then we'll then we'll, we'll come to agreement that the exception to that will be uh, um, remote motions as, as feasible uh, as we produce it. Diane? 
I'm willing to make a motion. I had a question, but I'll follow up. It, it was based on what you just said about the. So you want to make the original motion? Happy to do that. Go ahead, Mia. Um, I move that no non-essential town government meetings will take place face-to-face uh, -face or in person until the declaration, uh, emergency declaration is removed. This, will, this includes all town and committee, all town boards and committees. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Uh, we'll do a roll call vote on that. Diane? Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul Schubert, aye. Kevin McCarthy, aye. Kerry Thompson, aye. Jack Creighton, aye. That's unanimous, Tracy. Now, now let's address the, the fact that we, of what the chief was mentioning relative to um, uh, meetings will be allowed. Um, well, why don't I say it this way, because this is the way I understand what we're doing right now, and, and this is important, developing platforms whereby non-face-to-face -face committee and board meetings can be done. And what we want to do is, is uh, have Chris as his organization work and all do haste, but not take not so fast that it does get done right the first time. Establish a platform and directions and procedures that can be promulgated um, out to the to the committees and boards as to how they can meet and how to use the technology. That's what we want to ask the, you know the, the, uh, Chris to do. I don't know if we need a motion to that, but once that's done and that's promulgated, then then those kinds of um, remote meetings can occur. Um, so I don't know how whether we want to put that in a motion or not, but why don't we do Chris well, first, that, then that's Paul, it. I mean, then Diane. The, the governor issued directives last week that kind of allows that. Of course, there's no specifics on what you do. It's, it's you need to, you know, come up with an online platform and then and include the public, and if there's no way to include the public, you have to record the entire meeting and then make it available. So. Um, but you also have to give people access who have to appear in front of the board. So having a meeting is one thing when we're, just, when we're talking to each other. Having another meeting public, with public participation is another. And then inviting a third party to present an application is something we haven't figured out how we're going to pull off, particularly where you have. So I think we will, we're working on the first so we can have you know, regular at least board updates and we can talk to folks. Um, and that we hopefully will have something, uh, if not this week, but by next. Uh, and then we'll, we'll continue to roll out um, with more access as we can figure out how to load these platforms. One of the challenges is that everyone's looking at the same things we are. So the question is, will these platforms be able to withstand the pressure that's being put on them? Uh, and we will figure that out. So that said, that's our directive, is to, is to find these options so that we can all communicate uh, and stay in touch with each other uh, to allow government to continue to, to function. Uh, Paul? Yeah, I was saying that the governor probably is the uh, the recommendations are to strive towards online meetings as best as possible and pursue methods that are appropriate for that. In addition to where there is emergencies that are necessary, there may be need for emergency meetings for particular on-site locations. Um, so I, I think that probably would cover it. Diane, just it's a partial question that I don't think there's an answer to, which is just. I mean, I believe that any deliberative meeting obviously would still fo have to follow the 48-hour posting notice. Is that correct? Well, it, 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 yeah, a routine meeting would still have to be posted in advance. Yeah. Uh, emergencies like this one, you wouldn't. But correct. routine meetings would still have to be posted, and you'd have to explain how to access them. And if you couldn't, see, this is, this is the area that we don't know yet. The, the provision of the governor's order says if you don't, you have to record the whole thing and make it available to the public. Okay. <laughs> well, what like a, a, a transcript right, form the next right, right. day. No, no, not necessarily a transcript. I mean, you, but you have to then record it. We, we record select those meetings, at least one, four, three PD does. I don't know how you record an online meeting. I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I mean you can. Uh, so we have to go through the, techno the technology of that. And then, you know, again, the goal, though, is to you want the public to be able to access things. You don't want to, you know, even if you have a meeting and then release it later, it's not the same thing. So until we have regular, robust uh, public action, uh, most most things we do, as important as they are, can be deferred. I mean, it, uh, you know, um, and we will do that. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about government service in just a second. So, uh, so, but we do want to make sure our boards and committees are kept informed. Everyone understands what's going on, um, and we will try to find platforms at least to do tho those things so boards can meet and at least to, you know talk and communicate. Um, and as soon as we can find a way that we can, you know, engage the public and and, and allow public input um, and applicant input. Even just for deliberation of a town meeting warrant articles, you need to have people talking. Uh, we'll, 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 let that, we'll let you know. So that's literally we're going to be going back to town hall this morning and working on that. 
I know some other towns are considering using Facebook Live just because it can be broadcast live and then reposted for people to watch, so that is one option that we maybe should consider. I know a lot of the town is on Facebook, but not everyone, but it could be a platform. It's, it's definitely one we're looking at, uh, uh, Carrie, uh, most certainly for bringing government to people like in library and rec and elder affairs uh, programming so people could stay engaged. So we're most, because that's a platform that's fairly easy to, to make right. work. Um, so we, every, everything's on the table. So. I think one of the things we should be considering is using our television station 143. Um, we also, by the way, need to get that funded. Um, to many people do not understand or use social media, especially our seniors, and our seniors are at great risk of isolation because of this emergency to begin with. The other concern that we should be very careful of as a uh, as, uh, town government is that under the guise of all the things that we need to do, some very crucial issues might kind of get done without full public knowledge. So I think, and I don't know what the answer is, but I think we won't get to the answer until we've thought that we want to be very careful that some crucial issues that are have impacts uh, town-wide that we make an extra effort to make sure everybody knows about that. And I think it's gonna take a, more than one or two uh, communication platforms. Okay, anything else? Okay, um, next item then would be um, uh, discuss contact points for public services. Uh, Chris, you wanted to talk on that? So um, effective today, uh, all of our public buildings are closed, uh, all of our municipal buildings are closed. The schools are closed, Elder Affairs is closed to the public, uh, library, rec, uh, town hall, um, police and fire, you know, are, are, are open for service, but that, you know, the public should not be coming into them. Uh, and the same thing with public works. That's gonna be functional. The RTF will continue to function. Obviously, we ask people to keep that same distancing rule and to follow the rules. Uh, you still gotta use your blue bags, you still gotta follow those rules, okay? Please don't make people chase you. Please don't think this is an opportunity to get, a, you know, to, to, to break the rules. We gotta be rule followers now more than ever. And be careful with stuff, right? Please. Um, so that we are going to, our online platforms are, are, are uh, ramping up. We've now pushed the all facility stickers, which are expiring. We're gonna give people a grace period here because of the reality we're in. That said, they can all be done online. So if you need to renew your all facility stickers, Go online, follow the instructions. Um, you can actually print stuff out and drop it in the silver box and we'll process paperwork if that's what you need to drop off or you can scan it and send it in. We'll kind of decouple that from, from direct contact. And a lot of other functions, dog licensing, a lot of other things can be done online. Find yourself in a, in a place where you can't do that. Either send an email to the direct uh, an office or call. Call, I mean, the, the, we'll still have people answering phones and uh, we, can, we can arrange as needed uh, secure face-to-face -face if there's some kind of copy of some uh, you know, birth certificate or something you need to get, we can work to, to get that. So, but that's essential business only, something you might need for you know, uh, some kind of very important item. Um, and again, we're also gonna be doing emergency safety inspections. We're still kind of our emergency inspectors, but routine stuff is kinda, it's gonna slow down right now. So uh, we just have, uh, we have to ex expect that that's the case. Our staff are people too, and they have families, and, and um, they need to be safe. We're trying to figure out ways to make sure that we keep our, uh, our elder affairs supported. We're working with staff to make sure that we're supporting seniors at home. Um, to follow up on one of the things that uh, Selective Crane just pointed out, we are gonna try to push out regular programming at regular times. For example, on 143, we're hoping to put out you know, the senior yoga and stretch and strength classes in the morning on 143 at the time they would normally take place. So seniors can turn it on and do it from home. Um, and we're gonna try to do some more of those things um, and we'll try Facebook Live and others with other audiences that might be more amenable to those. Um, so we're gonna try to, to normalize things as much as you can in a circumstance like this. Um, I know that uh, I've talked to Don and his team. He's gonna try to grab some of the returning students and figure out who we can draft into service uh, to, to allow us to, to make 143 more robust as, as we can. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, police and fire operating normally and our public work staff, we're gonna continue to, you know, we need to have them operate too. That said, um, Social distancing, all this stuff still remains in place. You know, uh, please don't come to town hall and bang on the door and expect us to let you in because we can't. Um, and if there's an emergency, call 911. I mean, those things haven't changed. Um, we will do our best to respond, um, and we will we'll make things happen. We'll process permits as we can, but most routine stuff is going to slow down. It, it just is. 
Um, now, as I say that, uh, one of the most important things we need to do is engage on the public side. There's people who want to volunteer. There's people who want to help out. So what we're going to do, and I've talked to Glenn about this, um, we, we have a, a pretty robust committee application form online. It's worked nicely. We're, over the next day or so, we'll kind of tweak that up to add a volunteer application page. So people will go, can go on our website, fill out a form, tell us what you can do, what you know about, what mm -hmm. your background is, and then we'll be able to distribute that across to Elder Affairs and to, and to uh, emergency management and say, hey, we have a volunteer over here who can do this or this, and, and, and we'll see if we can't uh, help plug people in. That said, it's, it's a different kind of world. You know, we have to do this in a very deliberative way, but we're going to try to, to, to you know, th there's a great energy in this town, there's great talent in this town, we want to help channel it. Um, I think for some period of time it's going to be a little slow, because it just is. We have to be very careful about how we do these things too. We don't want to rush in, right, and, uh, and start causing more trouble, uh, unfortunately, or, or unintended consequences. That said, we want, we want people to, to know that, that we want them to, to engage and we want to help. Um, you know, there might be, you know, one, you know again, if, if you have a neighbor, you know, and then the grass starts to grow, you know, you can, if you want to help cut their lawn, you know, that's okay. I mean, let them know what you're doing. <laughs> um, you know, it, you know if, if you see, if you haven't seen an older neighbor for a little while, you might want to call us and make sure that, you know, we check in. We do check in with folks on a regular basis now. Not just the, 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 the uh, people who are normally, you know, frail and elderly, but, you know, we've asked our staff to just plug into regular attendees. Just call them regularly. How are we doing? And um, if you have networks like that, please continue to do that. Have people reach out to your neighbors and, you know, people still wave. <laughs> it's okay to wave. You got to have a conversation across the street or across a fence. Um, and uh, you know we want to just keep watching out for folks. So uh, let's keep let's keep doing that. You know if somebody left their garbage, you know Grand Waste came and the garbage is rolling. Mm -hmm. You know it's okay to help pick it up and put it on someone's you know front lawn or on their side yard. Um, that said, routine stuff. You know normally in a such circumstance we have a snow day, we open up and people come to rec or people come to the library. I'm afraid we, we can't do those things right now. We can still borrow books. There's a great ebook platform. So I know the library staff is eager to help people engage on the electronic platforms. There's Libby and, um, oh geez, I'm forgetting the other one. Um, there's, there's, two, there's at least two platforms you can sign up for. Uh, Ebooks, movies, there's all kinds of stuff available through the library system. So it's out there. I know the schools are working to figure out what they can do as well. Um, uh, and, and I'm hoping that in the next week or so they'll have figured out some other options. And, um, uh, and if anyone has any thoughts, you know, you know, for, you know again, I'm not, we're not gonna be able to turn around emails right away, but you know, if you have questions or thoughts, please just communicate them. Uh, we're going to continue to communicate on a daily basis with updates, and we'll do more. Um, you know, we'll do more TV and things like that as, as we can make things relevant for folks. Um, okay. So. All right. Anything else on the board? Okay. Uh, Jack? Yeah. Um, one of the things in communications, which I alluded to just <coughs> a second or so ago, is 143, um, I believe there's some kind of funding um, log jam, which is keeping the money from of Verizon from flowing to 143, and there <coughs> may be, and I have my information is is not complete. I just found out about it. Um, so, Chris, is there funding for 143 from Verizon, and is it being flowing to 143, or is there a lot? So, uh, we, it's actually in the warrant. So, so the, the state has required that the, the accounting for that change. So, uh, it's actually article, I think the board voted to recommend it the other night. So, it, it, it we have to change our accounting practice. So the, 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 the money's been collected and it's sitting there. So pending town meeting action, we were going to release the whole year's worth and then be able to do it ongoing. Um, Is there any way to facilitate I, We're going to find out. Um, a, 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 as of this point, we weren't because we had to adopt this local law. And, and, and they have fun. They, they, they do have funds they can tap. Uh, we're going to see. Uh, thank you for raising that. We're going to see if there's some work around it at this point. At this um, point, under the emergency declaration, does this board have the ability to release those funds? And, Mr. Uh, Chairman, you might address that. Well, I, I, I will tell you that if we can, pursuant to this is a state law, uh, this is not a local ordinance, um, so we will follow up on it. And it, it, 143 is considered a part of our emergency network, so obviously, if we can, if, exactly. if, if we can release any funds, um, which we will, I will ask Don to, to look into more today. Um, we will do that. Yeah, yeah, irrespective of the funding issue, which I know you're aware of and you'll take care of, um, 143 should be fully operational during this whole thing. There must be any kind of, a, you know, don't let whatever this funding issue is impede the operations of 143 at all. If anything, they should be fully maximized, the support to them, okay? 
That's that, that that's not going to be a problem. No, I understand. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, Diane. Okay, so the um, the move that we took to postpone all of, of, of meetings necessarily changes the timeline for town meeting, um, and I know that there's legislation pending at the state to to deal with that. But at this point. I mean, is it safe to say that we're not going to have town meeting on May 4th because we would need to have the warrant buttoned up and in people's hands three weeks ahead of time, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, so the way, so the way the, uh, I was actually talking to council about that today too. So technically, since you haven't signed the warrant, you haven't locked anything in place yet, at least that's what he said. Um, the state also is, is changing the rules to allow a moderator to, to move the meeting 30 Same days day. just by uh, act. And I actually have an email out to Dan as well uh, to find out uh, just to keep it plugged in. Um, while I wouldn't say it's guaranteed we're going to delay, I, I say that we're going to start making plans that we're going to have to delay town meeting. Um, it, the, the, uh, the, the, it basically, the warrant has to be pursuant to the bylaws in people's hands a week ahead of time, and it takes time to print that, and then we have to finish deliberations, which is the reason we usually leave a month. And then we want to make sure everyone understands it, right? The point is that we spend time after it's all buttoned up explaining everything that's happened and everything that's in there so when people get to town meeting floor they understand it um so it's likely we're, we're, we're that it'll end up being pushed a bit uh, whether it's a week or a month at this point i, I really can't say part of it is going to depend on what's happening at the world at large uh, and, and the world around us so uh if this if, if if all the social distancing work slows the virus transmission we can move more quickly um that said it's something we're looking at and i, I would say at this point it's likely that we'll end up having to push the date and I, I think needless to say and then probably speak for the board that we, we want your top priority and the top priority of the government to be health and safety of the community through until this emergency declaration is declared over so that that's really where we want your absolute focus because i know already you're getting various questions about this that but the standard answer as far as we're concerned can pretty much be that you and the entire uh, organization of the municipality is focuses on public safety and, and health and that's all you need to be the other stuff you know that can be your standard answer as far as we're concerned once the declaration is over then we these other things will flow Paul anybody else anything else anything else from our municipal leaders would like to say anything yes chief uh, we're going to hold off on um, doing fingerprints for people, uh, firearms licensing, uh, some of the different you know vendors' licenses. That's all going to be put off. We're just going to delay it, you know, probably for 30 days at this point. Um, if you have a license that's expiring, uh, you can you can send an email to the department. There's a, there's an email for the licensing officer on our website, and uh, we'll make note of it that you you did you know make a good faith attempt. Um, and we just ask that everybody be patient. Um, we're in a you know uncharted territory mm -hmm. here, so we might not get back to you as quickly as we usually would. Uh, but everybody's very busy, and we just ask for people to give us that leeway. Mm -hmm. um, um, thank you, thank you, Chief. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm I was just facetious. Does that mean no traffic tickets will be issued? <laughs> I can't promise anything. <laughs> okay, Chief. Um, just very, very quickly, from an incident command standpoint. Obviously, the governor came on last night, and he's trying to explain to everybody that very simply, this is not a three-week vacation. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity here to flatten the curve, in quotes, flatten the curve so that this yeah. crisis does not overwhelm the health care system. So w our message to everybody in town is everybody can do their part, and it's just as simple as follow the guidance that you're receiving about social distancing. The board, and I appreciate your efforts this morning to conduct a meeting and make sure that everybody is following those guidelines. This is going to be our chance to slow down the freight train that is coming. And it is coming. You know, it's just what it is. Just come to that reality. That being said, everybody in town needs to know that we're working on this on a daily basis. We are trying to keep everybody informed. We are doing the best that we can in that regard. If they don't get the information immediately, if it takes 24 hours, please understand that it's not that we're trying to keep anyone in the dark, but it just takes time for us to get everything together and get it out to the public. 
And the last point I make is that we do put out a daily message to everyone. If we're, if we're missing something in our messaging that somebody wants to see, then they need to notify us. And there are so many avenues that they can do that. And, you know, through which your, their elected officials, through Chris's office, through, you know, if it's a police or fire department uh, specific item, please reach out to us. But understand that we are working on this 24-7. And I don't mean to be cavalier about that. This is what it is. We are working this every single waking hour that every one of us has. So I just wanted to get that out. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Chairman, okay. can I just um, mirror that as well? So from, from South Shore Hospital and from the general health care system, um, what the chief said is absolutely correct. The volume <coughs> that is coming into the hospitals will rise. We're uh, social distancing is a real effective means. It is a individual quarantine, as you might say. The quarantine does work in clear cases where you can it, uh, it be able to do it. But the social distancing, this is not a snow day. This is not a week off because of a blizzard. It is, there are no play dates. There are no dinner parties. There are no outside of your own house. Keep everyone off interaction with anyone else. Six feet. We need to protect the EMS. We need to protect the police, the fire, the doctors, the nurses, the, the orderlies, the transport people that are going to be in the hospitals that will be probably stressed to a, a limit which we hope to control. If you can limit attrition of the staff, many of the staff may not be necessarily ill, but they will be taken offline and quarantined. If that occurs to a large level, we will be short-staffed both from the fire, the police, EMS, transport, hospitals, doctors, nurses. So do not have play dates. Do not have any interaction. Give us time to just push down the curve. This virus is able to be stopped. There's no animal vector in, in the United States that's going to carry it. It's human to human person to person. So if you can break the chain, give it long enough so that the overall in infectivity speed slows, we can do it. And that's the goal of all of these reasons why there are such draconian measures to limit it. We do not have a vaccine, we do not have a treatment, but we have mitigation efforts. Limit the handshakes, limit the distance. As you can see here, we're six feet apart. If you have a, a doctor, a nurse, or someone who is in a transport, a police, a fire, just give six feet. Keep that in mind. So if we mitigate the overall numbers, it will clearly limit the spread, and that will limit the spread to the older population that are clearly at risk. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Carrie? Thank you, Dr. Schubert. To follow up on that, if there's anything any of us in town can be doing besides social distancing, besides the quarantine measures to help our first responders, to help our doctors and nurses in town, to help all of your families, please let us know. Obviously, we need to be safe and vigilant with our interactions with each other, but a lot of people in town are eager to help and willing and have resources to help. So as this changes by the hour and by the day, let us know how those of us can be helping all of you that are on the front lines. Thank you. Um, Chris, uh, uh, Diane, you had something? I, yeah, but you can. No, go ahead. I, I just wanted to say that on top of this, and I hate to <laughs> make bad worse, but one of the things we've been talking about all year is addiction. And social isol isolation is probably the largest mental health problem and contributor to some of the mental health issues we have. So. I implore all of you to, to con keep that uh, front of mind as well because we need to find whatever way it is. And, and you know, I work for an arts organization. We're dropping you know, music videos and, and performance videos on a daily basis. It's not perfect, and it's, but, but this is my biggest fear in terms of once we get over the hump and oh, flatten the curve that we're gonna be dealing with some, some isolation casualties that um, you know, to me is, is, is something I think about every minute of every day. So thank you all for all your work. Good. Um, Chris, I just want to make sure it's clear to the public as well as the board that uh, the way we're structured, this, in the, this has been declared an emergency incident and, 
and so forth. You, or do you want to elaborate on just so the public knows what, <coughs> what the structure is here that, or the event that's being, isn't this considered, um, I mean, haven't we set up a team, there's an emergency? Yeah, we, we, I can speak to that, Mr. Chairman. Um, the declaration <coughs> was to, in all, for all intents and purposes, was to cut red tape so that we can get things done that we need to get done as quickly as possible for the public, just so they, they know that we have a working group that consists of public safety, public health, the town hall, IT, um, and, and others, the schools. Uh, Pat Sullivan has been a... Um, uh, has been a phenomenal resource for all of us. Uh, we're all working together day to day, and that's why I say we have an 8 o'clock working phone call every single morning. The phone call started at about a half an hour. Yesterday's was an hour and a half. We have so many things, and that was before the events of yesterday, where we learned from the federal government that there's going to be new CDC guidelines that are going to come out today, and that they're going to increase testing. The increased testing piece is phenomenal, but what does it mean to us as first responders? It means we're going to have more and more confirmed cases within the town of Coasset, which again is going to create somewhat, some issues for all of us as we try to work through this. So we are going to be the police officers, the firefighters, the, guy, the, the folks that have to go out as first responders are, are at risk and what we ask the public on that regard is that if they are and they've confirmed or they're in quarantine and we've put out what the differences are, isolation because you've been confirmed or quarantine because you've been in contact with somebody that's been confirmed, that if you call for emergency services, one of the very first things you tell people is exactly that. So that the first responders can take the appropriate steps to protect themselves so we can keep them online. One of our biggest concerns is that we start to lose our employees because not so much that they get sick, but because of the fact that they become exposed and have to go into quarantine. Uh, we both run very small departments. We cannot afford to have people out for 14 days. It's one of those things that we're working on day to day with our, with our troops to make sure that they understand what, what they're up against. Um, the other piece is very simply, what we talked about was the working group. The working group is exactly that. Things are changing on us so quickly uh, that we don't even know. I did not see the governor coming out yesterday and informing us that every single bar and restaurant was going to be closed. I did not see him say that he was going to extend the school closure to April 7th. We didn't see this stuff coming. So uh, as an example, we have so much work to get done today mm -hmm. because of yesterday's events. And that's what's happened every 24 hours. This, every 24 hours, the game has changed. And that's why we ask people, everyone, and Terry, when you made the comment about what can people do, what can they do? Socially distance, number one. That is the number one thing that they can do. Number two, Chris mentioned it earlier, Chris and Glenn are working on in a volunteer pool. Well, as we move forward, we'll be looking not just for, for people to help deliver food, but people that might have expertise that we might need, such as how do we get stuff out to the public? How do we make sure that people aren't isolated? How do we get those messages out? You know, how do we help 143? Or the second channel that we also have, which is the educational channel through the schools. So that's the biggest things that we're trying to get out. We are working on this every single day. If you have comments, questions, whatever, Please use the avenues that we've mentioned. Um, and please, deal with facts, not Facebook, okay? It's really that simple. Um, I have a little, little thing that popped up, and it said, be like Bob, okay? <laughs> Believe the science, not the rumors, not the fear, okay? So, you know, it's kind of a cartoon, but really it, it is that way. Become educated. Look at the, you know, the DPH, Mass Department of Public Health. Look at the CDC. Accept the fact that this is coming and there is guidance on how we can protect everyone, but most importantly, our most at risk folks. So everybody can do their part by just social distancing. I mean, it, it really is that, it's that simple. So those are, that's kind of my... I get a little long-winded sometimes, oh, but I'm useful. passionate about what uh, we're doing. Mr. Chairman. Um, thank Mr. you Chairman. very much. Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, 
Yes. Uh, just on organization. So Homeland Security through FEMA has required uh, a number of years ago that every government organization and tribal organizations uh, have adopt and train in what's called the uh, incident command system, which is a standardized uh, incident command throughout all levels of government countrywide. Uh, we have that. We have it in place. Uh, there are a number of different uh, key uh, people in that organization. Uh, Chief Sylvia is the incident commander for this incident in Cohasset, and the table uh, fills in with lots of other towns and officials as we, as he says, we've been working on. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Just Chief? One, one more thing, please, sure. Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief Sylvia reminded me of something when he was talking. Um, he was talking about um, testing sites. You know, the federal government has partnered with um, private entities. And we have to figure out what that means to us. Um, they mentioned CVS, they mentioned Walgreens, mm -hmm. and they mentioned Quest. We have all three of those in town here. So it, it is possible that we may have um, testing sites here. So that's something that's shaking out. We'll keep the public informed about that. Um, we just, we're just trying to um, get, our, get our heads around that. And I think uh, as, as much as uh, you can do to get testing in Cohasset, we strongly would like to have you do. I'm mm -hmm. speaking for the board. Sure. So we'd like you to that. get that as much as you can, and there's plenty of spots. I think the music circus might be another one. It's a huge parking lot right there. True. But anywhere you think you need, but that would be a really great thing if you could get testing in town here. Okay. One, and just the, uh, the last thing, not to be all gloom and doom, we're, um, we're, we're going to try to s post a lot of photos of what's going on around town and maybe some short videos with the officers and the cruisers and stuff like that just to lighten things up a little bit. Um, Chris has directed us to do what we can to, you know, bring the bring the outside to inside. the, uh, to the <laughs> inside. Right. Yeah, good. Yeah, I can I mention about the, uh, the testing also? The, as you saw on the CDC and on the uh, public address yesterday evening, the CDC recommends at this point the testing will be geared towards first responders, police, fire, medical staff, medical um, uh, support systems first over the age of 65. So they're going to be earmarked first for the high risk individuals to keep the system uh, screened. So that will likely be the first step. There will be from what uh, the CDC had mentioned, there will be one million over the next week testing kits that will be available, I believe they said, at 2,000 separate locations. There will be also some in-house testing in some hospitals, so there may be some flexibility also, which may allow for in-house testing of staff and uh, first responders in, in some of the hospitals in the area. That, I think that's key, uh, Doc, um, mm -hmm. because it, you know, we have, we have you know, 30 people each, and um, you know, if, we, if someone is taken offline, Due to quarantine, you know, we can quickly get them back online. Um, mm -hmm. We have the test available, and that was something new yesterday. Um, uh, first responders weren't given priority, but now they are. It's good. Okay, Carrie. One quick thing to note: some people have asked about what to do in certain situations, like recovery meetings. And I know that there are resources online for those types of meetings to continue happening online, and we can be posting about that as well because I know that is an important thing we need to make sure people know about. Good. Okay. Anything else? Okay. That's it. I think that we would like to let you guys get back to work. Uh, this has served its purpose, and uh, I thank it, really everybody for. Uh, we thank everybody from the community and the municipality, all the hard work that you're doing, and thank everybody for being here today. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second and second. Uh, roll call. Diane Kennedy. Um, aye. Paul Schubert, aye. Kevin McCarthy, aye. Carrie Thompson, aye. And Jack Creighton, aye. Uh, that's unanimous, Tracy. This meeting is now adjourned.